plan, pretty much along the same line. And the plan is implemented. Uh, during the attack on Gaza a couple of weeks ago, uh, the US, Israel used the cover of the attack to increase settlement in the West Bank. Uh, in the last year, 2008, the settlement increased to 60% in the West Bank. Meanwhile, uh, housing construction dropped in the main urban centers in Israel because their effort is to take over the West Bank. Uh, the, it's now planned, they're now planning to double, according to an analysis by Peace Now, which monitors settlement program settlers in the West Bank. Um, well, apart from some occasional ritual uh, indication, you know, signs of dissatisfaction, uh, the U.S. supports it completely, provides the economic, military, uh, uh, diplomatic, ideological support for it, and Obama intends to continue. Uh, the budget uh, has a remarkable provision in it. He's expanding. U.S. military aid to Israel, which is already off the chart, and expanding it for 10 years. So there's, a ten, there's an item in the budget for $30 billion of military aid for the next 10 years, no matter what happens, which is unprecedented. Uh, 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 all of the things that are happening there are in direct violation of Security Council orders, going back to December 1968, when the U.S still was part of the world and supported the Security <coughs> Council. Uh, and it's all totally illegal. And there's just no question about it. I mean, in 1967, Israel's top legal advisors uh, instructed the government that any settlement in the West Bank is in violation of the core principles of international humanitarian law, the Geneva Conventions. And the government uh, recognized it. Uh, Moshe Dayan, who was defense minister in charge of the occupied territory said, yes, it's illegal, but there's nothing new in that. And then he went on to give a kind of a poetic a description of what's happening. He says, the situation today resembles the complex relationship between a Bedouin man and the girl he kidnaps against his will. Uh, you Palestinians, as a nation, don't want us today, but we'll change your attitude by forcing our presence on you. You'll live like dogs. And whoever will leave, will leave, while we take what we want, okay? And that's what the U.S. policy is, and is concretely, not just in words. I'll go back to Kerry, and I emphasize his importance. This is the major current declaration of the Obama administration. He, of course, supported the U.S.-Israeli uh, invasion of Gaza a few months ago, and I stress U.S.-Israeli. They used U.S. arms, uh, U.S. blocked Security Council illegally, even by U.S. law. The U.S. blocked Security Council efforts to impose a ceasefire, uh, uh, and also crucial ideological support, namely justification. And Kerry repeats the standard line, which is almost universal. He says, he puts it as, if terrorists in Quincy, Massachusetts, were launching rockets into Boston, we'd have to put a stop to it just as the Israelis were forced to respond. Obama said the same. Uh, media commentary uh, is exceptionalist as far as I know. There is criticism, but that it was disproportionate and not that it was a crime. Uh, well, that's kind of interesting. That position, which is unanimously held virtually, is not only false, but transparently false. The issue is constantly evaded. The issue is not that Israel have a right of self-defense. The, Israel, the right is, did the U.S. Israel, both in it, have a right to self-defense by force? Okay, that's a different question. And in fact, there's a principle about that, which we all accept. You have a right of self-defense by force if you've exhausted peaceful means. And we all accept that. I'm sure nobody, no commentator, nobody in the government praises Putin uh, for uh, destroying Chechnya. Well, he was responding to Chechen terrorism, but that didn't justify it because there was a peaceful option, namely withdrawal. Uh, <coughs> you'll find many people on uh, July 4th who uh, praised the British uh, for uh, carrying out violent actions in the United States in response to George Washington's terror, and the terror was real. It was a terrorist army, the revolutionary army. And 
the reason is because they had a peaceful option, get out. Okay, so they have no right to use violence. Now that everyone accepts, but not when we're involved. Uh, did Israel have peaceful options? Obviously. It had narrow options, could have accepted ceasefire, which it had never done. I mean, it formally accepted ceasefires, but immediately violated them, and go through the details if you like. And there's a broader uh, option, namely stop the criminal actions you carry on the occupied territories, which are unquestionably criminal actions, and the world court has done it, the Israeli courts agree. So stop the criminal actions, and uh, then if that doesn't work, maybe you have a right to use force. But without pursuing the peaceful options, there is no right to use force. Well, finally, let's talk about the Kerry's thesis that there's a now that there's never been a legitimate partner for peace. So all this time when the Palestinians were calling for the international consensus, they weren't a legitimate partner. But now there is a partner. Uh, what's the partner? The partner is the segment of the Palestinian. Uh, population that the U.S. has decided to support. Now, that's, that's not the elected government. Remember, there was an election in January 2006. Uh, the U.S. and Israel immediately reacted to the election by harshly punishing the population. And another principle there, election, you, if you don't follow our orders in an election, it's not a democratic election, and we have a right to punish you for it. Okay, that was very dramatically illustrated in January 2006. I'll run through the details of a very brutal response by both to punish the population <coughs> for voting the wrong way. Uh, the U.S. and Israel also immediately started organizing military force to try to carry out a coup to overthrow the elected government. Uh, well, that coup failed, but they went on to uh, develop a military force. The U.S. General Keith Dayton is there working jointly with Israel, Jordan, other Egypt, moderate states, to create a paramilitary force uh, to overturn the results of the election. And that's why we now have a legitimate partner for peace. Here's Kerry. Uh, most important, now that we have a legitimate partner for peace, means strengthening General Dayton's efforts to train Palestinian security forces that can keep order and fight terror. Recent developments have been extremely encouraging. During the invasion of Gaza, Palestinian security forces largely succeeded in maintaining calm in the West Bank amidst widespread expectations of civil unrest. Okay, understand? The United States and Israel are destroying Gaza, wiping the place out. The Gaza and the West Bank is the same thing, only the United States distinguish, and Israel distinguish them. And there was concern that there might be expressions of sympathy and support in the West Bank for the people being slaughtered and the country being destroyed in Gaza. But the Palestinian security forces that we in Jordan and Egypt and Israel trained were able to suppress any expression of sympathy and support. And that showed, that's very encouraging. Uh, that shows that we can uh, really go forward with a legitimate uh, government. Namely, a collaborationist force. And for those of you who are familiar with real American history, the major contribution of the United States to imperialism over the past centuries has been to develop and implement very in a very sophisticated manner the concept of collaborationist forces. And that started in the Philippines over a century ago. It's been carried out throughout Latin America, some what's called National Guards or something else, but train uh, uh, co-opt segments of the elite with various gifts, train brutal, vicious military forces that will oppress, suppress the population. That's uh, been a real contribution and it works pretty well. It's second nature in the United States and much more sophisticated and effective and traditional imperialism, and that's why we now have